We are Squawking Dead. <laughs> and welcome back. Um, we had a very interesting, interesting episode to break down today. And I'm very pleased to be joined by, again, Cosmo Mom 9 and OG Squawk and D. Carol G. And I'm your host, David Cameo. Welcome. Uh, we have a little bit of housekeeping to do. First of all, we're going to be at Camp Merrimack Charity Bash on Thursday. Uh, some of us are going to be there throughout the day. I, on the other hand, have ran out of vacations days. So I will be there at 5, probably later. <laughs> so, But we'll be joined by Cosmo Mom 9 OG, Squawk and D, Carol G, on the SD, as Tom says, uh, and Meg the Geek. None other than Meg, Meg the Geek. And I have to actually mention that she will be doing press for Camp Merrimack Charity Bash. And if you don't know what that is, it's a dual charity event. Uh, I mentioned this on episode, I think, 68. And it basically, I broke it down. It's it's two different charities. Technically starts at 5 p.m., but also, I mean, there's events throughout the day, like photo ops and signings and stuff like that. So head out to campmerrimack.com slash fall. That's going to be in the episode descriptions for YouTube and Facebook and all the other things except Instagram and Twitch and eventually Mixer and all that stuff. So... Uh, join us. Uh, it's going to be a really chill, intimate evening. Uh, Kari Payton's going to be there, Cooper Andrews, uh, Karen Cisse, Diane, Carrie Cahill, um, Marisol Correa, Jeremy Palco, Peter Lou Zimmerman, Pollyanna McIntosh. I always forget her. Um, <laughs> but uh, join us. It's a very intimate evening. If you did like Caramac Camp Merrimack Charity Bash, uh, the Fall Bash is going to be really, really cool. So, like, very intimate, very, very nice, concise evening. And the next day, we have Walker Soccer. Uh, so, we have a table. We're going to be filming the panels, or as many panels as we can. And uh, hopefully, we'll get our interviews uh, all in a row so that we can... Uh, well, I mean, we're not going to tell you. We're just going to surprise you. And this is going to be all in post-production. So... Uh, join us at Walker Stalker. Meet us at our table. And speaking of our table, we, we've been working with Felicia Ray. You may or may not know her. She's mostly on Instagram. And she came up to me, I think it was like last week or the week and a half ago. And she said she had seen some posts from Samantha Morton, who's been really active on social media, right? And um, she had seen that she had adopted uh, a pet from Street Paws. Now, uh, P-A-W-S. Yes, it is Street P-A-W-S. Um, now, they're an organization that actually helps uh, pick up strays, cats, dogs, etc., um, feeds them, uh, brings them back to health, and finds uh, homes, you know, actively finds homes for them, uh, for pet lovers, people interested in adopting pets, um, you know, make sure that everything, all the boxes are checked so that when you bring them home, they're, you know, in a safe kind of, you know, safe as humanly possible for, for rescues. Um, and so what she is going to do in honor of that uh, adoption that Samantha Morton did, uh, she um, worked with us and she's going to basically put a little ch uh, like donation bucket on our table. So when you do visit us, uh, bring some loose change. <laughs> you know, so, you know, do a little shopping, break a few 20s, you know, and get, get a couple dollar bills, maybe a fiver, maybe a 20. Eh? I see you. I see you, pet lovers. Um, <laughs> and just hit our table up and then uh, just just show uh, show those pets some love. Now, you can. You don't have to. That's fine. You can just sit and chat with us. But, you know, think about it. You know, you have that in your mind next couple days. I'll remind you again on, on uh, social media. Uh, we just posted her video, actually, on our social media pages. But if you do want to see her complete, her full video, head over to at Felipe alicia.wray uh, she posted an IGTV video so check it out and without further ado TWD family we now present to you the second episode of season 10 and this one was basically a mostly origin story how about this what are your impressions of this episode so far intense it's very yeah. intense we should, um, we should start off the show with like name through use three ad adjectives to describe this episode and then we'll dive in uh, <laughs> gosh can you imagine Jeez, three. I mean, it was intense. <laughs> it was dark. I thought it was very dark and oddly relatable. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. To uh, your life? <laughs> Well, like it gave it fl it fleshed out Alpha a little bit more fleshed. to be able to kind of understand <laughs> her her mindset then and now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I appreciated that. I thought it was they did a good job, and I like how um, 
I, I throughout the episode, I, I do appreciate the back and forth to kind of show how it's how it how she is in her current state and why. And um, we had more insight into her mentality towards Lydia, towards you know, all of that. Like it's so I thought it made her strangely a little bit more relatable at times, not completely, obviously, but you do get the impression then and now she still obviously harbors feelings for her daughter. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. compromising feelings for her daughter. <laughs> um, yeah. Rachel, what do you what do you got? <laughs> um, it was it was very inform it was very informative. Um, Carol, you'll probably agree when I say they are they're really expanding on the alpha character. Um, oh, this, completely, they're, they're definitely going in a direction. They're they're humanizing her almost, mm -hmm. which we did not get a taste of that in the comics. I mean, it was just, she was a very one dimensional character in the books, and mm -hmm. they are really bringing this character to life. And I totally agree. There's something you know. I don't. I don't. I don't know if I want to say relatable, but like you. Yeah. <laughs> by getting this information, you, you almost feel more for her, right? Like as a human. Right. And uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting. It was interesting to see that, you know, what we've seen of her so far or what we've thought of her so far after this episode, I don't think I, I don't feel the same about her. You no, know? I agree. I, mean, like, I, think I feel differently. Yeah. Because right, you guys have both read clear. the comics, right? Yeah. Well, and I think it, it's pretty clear that Alpha has had feelings for Lydia all along. I mean, right. she's put on this, <laughs> this mask, pun intended, <laughs> yeah. to kind of hide her emotions, right? Like put up this, this strong wall of, you know, this is how it has to be. I had to abandon my child, but it's really getting to her. Like it's yeah. not supposed to, but it is. It yeah. really is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Th this episode is riddled with allegory, by the way. I, oh, and yeah. I, I took yeah. like a second watch to really see exactly where they were, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I, I will definitely get through it because I do want to go <laughs> chronologically and then jump back a couple times because yeah. that's kind of how it got revealed to me. <laughs> I think we almost have to go chronologically. Like it was very like this scene correlated with this flashback and then this scene yeah. with this flashback. Like it everything really tied together all 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 along. Especially that that last scene. I mean it was almost yeah. like mirrored, but I mean cut after cut. I mean she's thrashing around, he's thrashing around. Like it yeah. it was very I was just like <laughs> the yeah. whole time. <laughs> yeah. The events of the past and the events of the present line up specifically mm -hmm. to tell you something. Mm -hmm. And um um, it really does show like alpha in the past and alpha in the present both it, it, it nothing has changed nothing has changed you know and that's just one like telling of the tale is is that mm -hmm. you know no matter what she is always compromised but there's always that part of her that's always trying to be this it's like in, in a way it's kind of like narcissism you know what I mean mm -hmm. like there's a part of you that sees yourself as one thing but then you know once somebody shows you a mirror it just you start to crack you know no, you, you start to rebel against, you know, you, I, how many times have you pointed out to somebody, hey, you're being an asshole. <laughs> and, then, and then they go, but I'm not an asshole. How can that be? And then they punch you in the face and something happens. But <laughs> but, but it people will double down on what they and how they see themselves as. And that doesn't mean that they are an asshole. But as soon right. as something threatens th that, that shell of what they like portray themselves as or what they see themselves as, you know, mm -hmm. some people, and this is what narcissism is, those people will double down. So it's not true. It's not true. It's not true. <laughs> So that's that's a lot of what I saw in this episode, you know, and and all the different ways that that happens, that that manifests. So I need more soda. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a moment because, like, we're all really freaking tired, by the way. Um, <laughs> I kind of want to start with seven years ago, um, the idea of seven years ago, because we're talking about, you would think that this would be like the start of the apocalypse, but... But the thing is, it's like, when we saw the start of the apocalypse, like, Lydia, and when they were in that basement, Lydia was... Um, I don't know how old she must have been in, in the, those clips, you know, that time. And, and now you, she's definitely bigger. So, yeah, I mean, the apocalypse has been going on for a while, I guess. Because, I mean, how old would you figure she was in that seven years ago? She was what, like... I thought Maybe she looked to be about 10. 10. Yeah, that's what yeah. I figured, like 10, mm -hmm. which makes sense with like seven years later, she's like a you know, teenager, like seven, 17, yeah. 18. Yeah. That's kind of how I figured that her age at that time, if it was seven years, we know she's about 17, 18, which was, you know, close to Henry's age. And this was seven years yeah. ago. So yeah, I, I assume about 10. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I yeah. <laughs> which means that like the two years prior to that, 
two or three years prior mm-hmm. to that when the apocalypse starts. Basically, the origin story that we saw last season of mm-hmm. The Walking Dead. Right. Um, the younger Lydia, which who happens to be played by, they're actually yeah. both sisters, <laughs> both Lydia's from the past are yeah. played by Scarlett and Havana Blum. They love to do that. Yeah, I, I love, love it that. when they do that too. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. it, it just, you know, we are the Walking Dead family. You know what I mean? I mean, to, to that extreme, right? Like, they even use yeah. family members in the cast. And I just, that, to me, is just a very precious detail. <laughs> Keeps it consistent. Yeah, between yep. between the Anderson, oh, sorry, I was going to say the Anderson brothers, Ooh, the Dodson, Dodson brothers. Yeah. Mm, same div. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, between but those I would two, guess yeah. Young, young Lydia was probably seven or eight, which yeah. would have been, you know, a couple of years before now, this episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So yeah. It seems so. like Alpha learned early, early on how to how to walk with the dead. I mean, yeah, the she whole was even like, trick. It seems like yeah, the guts and like she really got even got into character and was like snarling and and biting and like I mean she really yeah yeah I mean she was yeah. really getting into it yeah. really more than she needed to. <laughs> uh, you know that's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying I don't think the, the biting and the snarling was, was well, necessary I liked it it just wasn't necessary well right. I mean it's like she says it's like you have to kind of get into it you know you have mm-hmm. to be it you know mm-hmm. so it's like the fake it till you make it and that's in a lot of yeah. this episode by the way faking it till you make it yeah you know? yeah um, <laughs> But also that opening scene, too, I think we needed to be reminded what the stakes are all over, you know, just in terms of the apocalypse. And so that brutal, gruesome scene with that lady, who, by the way, that was awesome. That was incredible. Honestly, that was, I, when that happened, it reminded me of like, wow, I don't think that we've seen this in a long time. You know what I mean? Like, because I feel like so much of the conflict has been like between person to person that we haven't seen like the kind of carnage that was going on like at the start, because now everyone who's around is so much more martial that they're not necessarily like, they're not going out like that, you know, mm-hmm. necessarily as much as it was like years ago when the, fir- when the apocalypse first happened. And like, yeah, that was mm-hmm. still a real threat i was like oh god i forgot about this oh i mean it's still a real threat that's the thing oh yeah it's funny you say that though carol because you're absolutely right we you know we haven't seen those kind of attacks in a long time and if you think about it this was seven years ago we were seeing those kind of attacks on the show seven years ago yeah so that i mean that again like true to detail you know that is what was happening at that time now like you said you know people are a little bit smarter they know how to how to deal with the dead better but yeah yeah, that that was like it took me a surprise that and for that reason I was like, oh whoa. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and then you're like, oh, it's been a minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, I haven't seen this in a long time. Yeah, yeah. I just think about it. Like seven slash eight years ago, you know, Carla was bit. This is around mm-hmm. that time, yeah. by the way. Just to kind of give you perspective. Yeah, true. You know, this is probably close to when uh, maybe a couple months plus or minus, well, more minus, uh, before Rick was helicoptered away. You know, we're ta- you're talking about two plus oh, years. Oh yeah, a little bit longer. Rick, than, yeah, because yeah. because Rick got oh. helicoptered away two plus months. Sorry, two plus years into the apocalypse like two like two and a half and change i want i want to say does that make sense i i can't agree with that only based on judith's age i that's the only thing hanging me up on on the right. timeline she mm. she was not okay so if we're two and a half years into the apocalypse knock off nine months for the pregnancy we're saying judith was two when rick got helicoptered out of there mm. yeah mm. <laughs> what do you mean eh? <laughs> We he always get into this one. <laughs> yeah. I know. I yeah. will. I will go forever on timelines, and I and I get. Mm. I get there. You know, they're as accurate as possible, and I really appreciate that. But Judith wasn't two years old. <laughs> was she Rick less or more? She was more. She was at she least five. more. She was at yeah. least five when he got helicoptered. Out. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. Had to have been. Had well, to have been because we're now six years from that point, and she's what? She's eleven. Yeah, I mean, and you yeah. gotta think about it too. Like, remember when, like, the savior still had control over things or still had them under their thumb and Negan came to like their to, to Alexandria and like went into the room and was like oh look at this little angel and whatever yeah. like she was like at that point it's I mean like she was two. two but she was pretty maybe like a year and a half like or something along those lines so I think her hair kind of threw my my aging off too because she had a lot of hair and it was really long so she looked a little bit older see that the scene you're talking about I kind of put her at about three at that time which makes sense just just based on like her her side how big she was yeah. she was 
you know, her mobility, things, things like that. We have to keep in mind that Silas at three. (laughs) We have to keep in mind they use the same (laughs) actor, actor as, or actually the same twins um, Mm. in season nine. So, I mean, at most, and this is at most where I'll put Judith at is ten, maybe. Right now, day. Yeah, and I, I I would probably aim more for like nine and a half, nine, even because I think she was just about. She had to have been just about uh, almost three uh, by the time Rick Grimes. Helicoptered away. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, you know, they would have used another actor if it was like five. Because remember, she was like still crawl, not crawling around, but she was kind of still um, behind the scenes calling him, uh, calling Andrew Lincoln uh, stinky <laughs> and all that stuff. So she's kind of, she's still kind of like three ish. You know what I mean? That's why I say tops, tops 10. You know what I mean? Yeah. Present day, I could see her being like ten or so. Yeah, yeah I mean, Judith how was, is ten now on the show? I wonder how old Kaylee Fleming is. Actually, she's twelve. Too. Kaylee's oh, twelve. Boy. I, yeah. I I would probably put her at ten. Let's let's split the difference and call it ten. But even I don't then, think she's, was that six years ago? She would have been four when yeah. Rick took off. I'm thinking it's seven now because there's another time jump. We went from winter to actually what some people say summer. And Judith oh, like Judith that? was born in this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's like half okay. a yeah half a year because then Rosita wasn't as winter. pregnant in in the winter. Right. Uh, and, and by by the time the baby's winter. out, yeah. And they've had how many days of baby time? Was it forty two days? I think something. Like like 40, that was on the on the charts yeah something like that oh i don't i don't think i saw that but that would be a good indication of time <laughs> yeah there's like a stretch yeah, of time yeah. like at least a month okay. so yeah you got nine months plus another another month so 10 months 11 so yeah I, Ten, so, so almost makes a, sense yeah. so i mean that's why i say seven years in the future because this mm-hmm. would put it like just before the yeah, time yeah. jump right yep. this yep. is why i brought yep. this up because we're starting <laughs> to like see where things start to align like oh if we can't use the old metrics we'll use new metrics <laughs> <laughs> figuring right. out what the time was it was a fight <laughs> all night uh, on that fight but we'll have a, a, a like a vigorous discussion that's what people say when they want to say they fight they that's fall right. heavily um, yeah. we're not fighting we're discussing yeah we're, we're, discussing. we're, we're hashing yeah. it out we're having a talk <laughs> yeah exactly. and, and a brewski well not really a brewski <laughs> so deep so deep bad. but the, yeah the reason I wanted to, wanted to bring that up because it's just interesting to see how things line up I mean I would still say you know like walkers are still a threat obviously um, yeah. And however martial you are um, in skill set, I, I still think that they're they're always going to be an obstacle, right. you know. Yeah. So, but it's just interesting to see that woman, how she crashed, you know, how that all happened. That's two years in, you know, two years plus, mm-hmm. almost three in. So, you know, it's just interesting to see how that stuff can still happen. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, oh, yeah. so anybody catch the name of the institution where they find Meta? The name? Yeah, I watched it twice. I didn't see a sign. Second Lives. Oh, no, I did. I didn't see the sign, but I watched Talking Dead, and that was one of the questions, so I did know the act. Talking Lives, that's that's what it was called? I think I missed uh, this week's Talking Dead. I'm ashamed of myself. I had, or no, we did watch it when it was on, yeah. Yeah, I I didn't see it at the time, but that was one of the questions. So, yeah, I remember it, but. Oh, okay. Um, (sighs) But it's kind of interesting because it's a, uh, I think it's like, it's kind of like a mental asylum slash rehab clinic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm piecing a lot of this, not only from watching it, but from like articles, um, like all these different articles on like, because, because there's, they're dropping some serious breadcrumbs this week, by the way, on Beta's backstory in Mm -hmm. like interviews and stuff like that. I feel like maybe like uh, Ryan Hurst may have dropped a little too much. He definitely did. And (laughs) if you miss Talking Dead, he, he, yeah, he dropped a big nugget. Actually, him and Hardwick. Yeah. Was it, was it the, the whole, um, the connection to other shows bit? Yes. Because he did that in an interview interview too oh okay with yeah. um i can't remember with whom but yeah um but yeah either way it's it's just kind of I, what do you think about that because i'm a little bothered by that in a way like what? it's that cool part? yeah like i'm a little like like let it happen baby <laughs> you know? and then we'll go back to fear and be like oh yeah it is him you know <laughs> like where's I, this is the problem i've been having with fear like we, why not let things reveal themselves and then we'll be like yeah i thought that before but now oh, yeah. they're telling us you know like so there's yeah. like little discoveries missing from that but what do you think about that well Car- carolyn i know from the comics that beta is a a, a celebrity of sorts yeah. he yeah. has a very recognizable face right um, so i expected that character to be somebody well known and 
Meg and I had a, a small conversation earlier and she reminded me that Tyrese was actually an NFL player. Like he was, Tyrese was also well known in the before. Um, yeah. I was going to ask you guys about that because I saw that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in the books, um, Beta is actually a, a, an NBA player, famous right. NBA player. Was, and yeah. can there's, I, since there's oh, Tyrese, yeah. was, did he announce that in this show too? I'm not sure. I, I mean, I, I, I remember, I remember having the information, but I don't remember how I came to get it besides Meg telling me earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. But I don't think they'll, I don't think they'll have two athletic stars. I think yeah. they'll, yeah, I think these little breadcrumbs we're getting is, is leading exactly where we think it's going to lead. Well, part of those breadcrumbs is saying definitely not a, an athlete and, and they're saying yeah. it's definitely, yeah. <laughs> definitely musician related well and, and they're we saying it's heard definitely singing. related to fear and that bothered yeah. me like yeah. it was like and oh give did, me one you know i don't yeah. know yeah and we did hear him singing a little bit well humming this episode yeah. that was another little clue when i heard him humming i immediately thought of of the rec the vinyl conversation we had and i was like oh my gosh there it is there this is the beginning of it <laughs> i just can't believe it i just i'm very surprised yeah. i'm very surprised at this did I'm you catch, pleasantly uh, surprised, but <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I, I just don't like that. Like they're practically saying, "Oh, that's the thing." That was he's a jazz musician or blues musician. That's the thing. He had a uh, he had a country hat on though. Maybe he's a country he singer. A, yeah, he had a he had a hat on. If he is hat. fine, but either or, <laughs> either or. Yeah, you know. Did you guys catch um, what song it was they were humming? I was trying to figure that Did out. You? What's What's yes. that? Walking After Midnight by Pets Klein. Oh, yes. how appropriate. I, I yeah. don't, maybe I do know that song, but so I just sing I it for it. us. You have a good voice. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I did, I caught her, I caught it when um, Samantha Morton was humming it because she did the, you know, the very telltale lyrics, you know, notes. And then during Walking Dead, they actually made even more mention about it. You mean Talking and they, Dead? Or? Who, talking Dead. What did uh, I say? Walking Dead. But yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. During Talking Dead, they, um, Edit. They confirmed it. Yeah, no, they confirmed that that was in fact the song. And then they shared a few of the lines. And a couple of the lines say, Night winds whisper to me, I'm lonesome as can be. I go out walking after midnight. So mm -hmm. it's very like whisper esque and like, you know, talking about how they're alone and looking for somebody to walk with them in the mm -hmm. darkness. I mean, or at just least he is. Spot Oof. on. Yeah. 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 Especially when you see all the scribblings. Like, I, I jotted down whatever I could. But yeah. I it's, am the end of the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and also, like, I, I, I'm throwing it a little bit back to fear in a way because it's kind of like what they did with, um, what was the song again? again uh the traveling wilburys uh, uh it's all right oh yeah so, so there's like yeah. themes like it's all right blah, blah blah like adversarial but like it's all right as long as we have each other kind of you know so there's you're on the road but you know as long as you know we love each other everything's gonna be all right you know and mm -hmm. so like i love how these things tie into the episodes and it kind of gives you a, like a fuller picture but and obviously and it seems like samantha morton knows the song and she's singing it as well or humming it as well mm -hmm. uh, and i definitely want to get to that part too because I, like why don't we talk about it now because uh what do you think is going on through her mind when she decides first of all like unprompted humming along to what she thinks she's hearing beta humming to like i know exactly what she's doing yeah this is a this is a technique that she's doing and it's a it's a controlling technique and she's asserting her dominance over him by first mimicking his actions he will take notice which he did and mm -hmm. then before long he will start mimicking her actions and following her this is this is a this is a proven technique in control so and she's doing it <laughs> right like so w what is that part though is kind of is it kind of like you know i could do this better than you or something like that or like like i could do whatever i want uh, even because she because she was humming it trying it out in the hallway as he was doing it and then he comes up don't do that again <laughs> like, yeah um so I just thought that's, that's, yeah. I, Cause I'm like thinking to myself, oh, this is just, she's too slick, man. She's really way too <laughs> slick. But then she does it again. Mm -hmm. Like, and so I'm wondering, there's a lot going on when it comes to interpersonal relationships. Cause like you're thinking, okay, maybe she's just trying to like do that, do that thing. That's uh, that classic trope in television where like, oh, maybe I'm just gonna, I'm going to show him what he's missing. You know, and, like <laughs> have this strong man that I can have at the, you know, curled around my pinky, you know, like that kind of thing. 
interesting. <laughs> so I, I, I was just trying to figure that out, man. Yeah, Maybe. I, I, I mean, she could definitely see him as an ally. Yeah. Big and strong, you know. Yeah. Uh, I kind of wanted to also go back to the camp, like, because right after the, the first initial scene, they're at camp and, and Beta is kind of telling Alpha. And I, when I saw this in the, um, when I saw this in the, in the preview, I kind of wanted to see if you were where I was at when I saw this. Part of the previews, and I think this was even in the trailer, says, we are, we are far from the enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, when I heard that initially, like before I saw this episode, I thought he was saying, we're not the enemy. Like we're far from the enemy. Oh, oh, you're I, like, you know what I mean? I know. You yeah. didn't think that either, I didn't did you? Think about it like no. that. <laughs> I, meant, I thought he meant location. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know why I assumed the former. I was just trying, trying to think of myself, oh, this is interesting. Because I think it's like a little interesting to me. Like, oh, maybe. Because if you think about how Alpha came about, and this is actually going to be important um, later on when we start discovering things. But I thought it was a little bit more interesting that Beta thinks that, you know, you know, like there is no conf that, you know, there is no conflict. You entered on our land. There is no conflict. You know, you took my daughter. There is no conflict, etc. Because that's how she came up off in the beginning. He's like, you know, you stay in your lane, I'll stay in my lane. Never the twain shall meet. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was interesting that Beta was still on that kind of page, that kick, because it's even from last year, there you could already you could still see schisms in, in Alpha clearly because you know when she cries, she stabs the guy in the head and yeah. you know, that sort of thing. And the look on, on uh Beta's face when uh she when Alpha lets go of Lydia. So there's things like that. So I, I don't know. It's kind of why I thought that was a little interesting because you know, later on you there are like images and flashes of what Alpha had done behind the scenes during that specific meeting at the hilltop that kind of tell you how calculating Alpha really is, mm -hmm. you know, about how to get what she wants. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder, like, like who's the more committed person? Who's the more um, frightening person, too, you know, if you think about it? Because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you see, like, displays of Beta's raw power throughout this episode. It's mm -hmm. kind of amazing. <laughs> I mean... Smashing walkers up against the the wall <laughs> yeah like matt lintz did <laughs> not have a floating. chance like or henry did not have a chance with him no. yeah no here's my no. stick <laughs> like, right? what's oh up my God. No. get that yeah. stick up. Get. <laughs> yeah. The toothpick. <laughs> um, yeah. Speaking of teeth, uh, anyway. <laughs> like, I, by the way, like those have to be like no, they don't have to be. But obviously, the gold teeth can be uh, are, are definitely added. But like the other teeth, are those like veneers or something? Because I'm wondering now. <laughs> I think they're. I think they're his teeth. Oh, I mean, the gold. He's got gold caps on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but I think other than that, it's all him. Mm -hmm. But he has kind of like okay. Sorry, Ryan Hurst. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, do you mean like veneers in real life or just for the show? When like, he smiles in real life, he has a normal, you know. Ding, okay, okay. Ah. Well, yeah. I mean, I just thought his teeth kind of look like jaggedy a little on the show. I think that it's just they give him like a grill. Like, they just kind of give him like, you know, you just pop it in and like, you know. just yeah. to it's that. not just the gold teeth that kind of No, I know what you're saying. It look kind of like jaggedy. Yeah. Kind of like, I know. So you think that's part of it or is that just him? Because I, I, I don't know if, if, if I should feel bad. <laughs> no, I think that's just part of what they give him because okay. like in real life, like he's got like a, you know. A good smile, etc. A good a pair of teeth. smile, you know. I kind of want to look this up at some point. <laughs> like, <laughs> because I'm, like I'm about to go into it. I'm like, damn, they did a great job on his messed up teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Because I know the gold <laughs> teeth, definitely, I know he puts those on, but, like, there's the other teeth. Woo! <laughs> Ryan Hurst, see a dentist. Yeah. I mean, sorry, Beta, see a dentist. Beta. <laughs> like, but, uh, like, it just, I don't know what it is about that effect, about seeing him go into it like that, like, just, like, baring his teeth like a like a bear, almost. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're revisiting this bear analogy a lot, but, but it's kind of interesting to see him do that. When yeah. he's angry, it's just terrifying. Mm -hmm. It is very animalistic, though, right? I mean, that's what yeah. animals do when they're when they're mad or scared they show, they their, show teeth. their teeth That's yeah how he's talking yeah because he's angry but isn't that the weird irony too because like because there, there's a lot of ironic things about the whispers but one of them is which it's like animals don't give a fuck they don't yeah no like, like they know no. when to be quiet you know when they're hunting prey etc cetera, etc cetera. but like mm -hmm. they're quiet all the time so there's like a weird like okay you're pack animals but are you you know yeah like they're going with what their idea of a pack should act like right not like a human an pack? animal yeah yeah and mm. i mean we'll get to it but it's not for everybody because obviously we see the one sister who clearly can't you know conform mm. so. I'm, su I'm surprised there's more well and we'll get to that as well <laughs> like i'm surprised there's more that can't conform 
let's set that set up the whole idea of because alpha kind of brings up um you know we need to replenish our guardians you know have them wander the fields and you know we need to prepare you know first of all we need to come back you know, because they they said that you know, like like I said before, um, we're away from the enemy. We're far away from the enemy, mm-hmm. and there's that concern that like, let me bring this up now because it's going to be important later. We're far from the enemy. We want to make sure that they know that we're still here. You know, we don't mm-hmm. want them to slip. And like she's like, she doesn't want them to become complacent and get comfortable. Yeah, basically, or he doesn't because, but she's kind of confident. She's saying like, um, what we did to them, they won't. They'll fall in line. They won't cross that border. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it, it, like we don't. We shouldn't have to worry about them but okay okay <laughs> like yeah. we'll go back um but I, I bring this up because they need to get more guardians and so they bring the well the yet unnamed gamma and her sister and then we find right. out her sister is the woman who abandoned who had to abandon her child at the hilltop mm-hmm. i'm telling you this whole episode reeked of like this is why i'm saying it was dark because there's a whole lot of like triggering mother daughters children kind of mm-hmm. you know trauma going on here well, and- Let's episode. talk about that because I really like the fact that I have two mothers, zombie mommies, <laughs> <laughs> two of the three, right? Yeah. Um, because I kind of, I, I want to get your take on what I'm, for lack of a better word, because I wanted to say like a separation anxiety or, a, a, well, it's less that than it is almost like a post, like a post postpartum or, or something like that. But right. for lack of a better word, I'm saying PTSD, like the trauma of having to do that, you know, something very unnatural for somebody so young. First of all, she's very young. Yeah, you see when she takes off her mask, like, I mean, they're both young, both sisters, obviously, you know, and you, you get that impression. I mean, yeah, I mean, to me, like, that was one of the things that's one of the reasons why I say this episode was relatable, because it's like, for me, it's hard for me not to kind of empathize or, or, or put myself in that situation, like, from the beginning, when like, Alpha's running around with Lydia, and Lydia's freaking out and she's like, hurry mom, hurry mom. Like I would, like that gives me anxiety because I think of my own kid, you know, doing the same thing or whatever. And your natural instinct is to just kind of, you know, with that sense of urgency of like to protect them. And even when Alpha's inside the building and she, you know, her and Beta have that kind of long hallway confrontation. She's like, look, I'm, I don't mean any harm, but if you kill me or, you know, you're going to have to kill her too, or, you know, something along those lines. Like, it's like, you're, you're going to, I'm not going to let you like get away with that. You know, like you're going to have to, you know, go through me first. And, you know, so it's kind of interesting the way this was done. And I mean, we'll get to it. Like the, their whole, her moment with like one of the sisters in the little, which is funny because because I didn't think of it that way, but it was like I Eddie either. who kind of mentioned like, oh yeah, it's like a nest. I was like, oh, ooh, yes, it was a nest. Because <laughs> I, I do want to get into that when that comes, but I like that you brought that up. Like I almost didn't latch onto that ah. idea of, <laughs> I caught of like, that. what it took. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> what it took for for Alpha to say I'm not going down fighting, especially so with my daughter in tow. Right. I didn't connect that initially, and when you brought that up, it was like, oh, okay, I see. There's more parallels than I, than I thought there were. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's all Rachel, throughout. like sorry. it's all weaved throughout to me. Um, yeah. but Rachel, what did you feel like anything specific when I mean just from like that onset of like the sun feels like it's burning my skin, like which yeah. wow. Yeah, uh, it's pretty powerful. Zany, weird, creepy, powerful. Yeah, that line kind of confused me because she because she said that right. Like, can you feel the sun? It's like burning our skin. But she said it almost happy, like it was a good. Yes. Feel. Like I could so, probably explain that one, but <laughs> it well, it was a little confusing to me because she was obviously upset about something, but but said it with such a happiness, happy tone to her voice. So I didn't. I don't know. I didn't quite, I don't know. I didn't understand that specifically, but yeah. Um, other sisters, sister Thora, later Gamma. I don't know what we call her before Gamma, but. Pre-Gamma. Pre-Gamma. There we go. Pre-Gamma. Pre-Gamma. Um, she, yeah, is clearly more, um, what do they call it? Committed than her yes. sister is um but i don't know if it's necessarily a commitment to alpha and beta or if it's a commitment to staying alive (laughs) right there there is something to what you're saying by the way i I will say that i feel like i feel like pre-gamma knows how to play the game and (laughs) she's gonna stay alive by playing the game yeah yeah i think that i think there's a lot of that going to what she does oh yeah which also pisses me off when people talk about uh fear the walking dead but whatever we're not gonna get into that now (laughs) because there is like a, a 
a, something to be said about what the whispers are doing and, and, and what, and what fear the walking dead is doing. It's just the exact opposite direction. And it's like, which would you choose? <laughs> and like, yeah. do, do you want something more like civilization or do you agree that we need to actually kind of regress <laughs> kind of like yeah. the dead? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to really say about that. But, mm. but I think, I mean, cause we don't find out about that, that this is the woman who abandoned her baby until a little late, like a midway into later. the episode. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, they keep flashing back. Like, I think that they had like these little kind of pings where it was like, I, I don't know at what point you started getting oh, those flashes you of do. like, of, oh, and then you realize, oh, she was the one with the baby because it's like, she's sort of like, she gets into this sort of like daze and like, then they have like the, the kind of flashbacks and you kind of realize, oh, you know, that's what it, that's what it's about. Well, yeah, you mm-hmm. hear that. I mean, you, you kind of know just from the baby, like her hearing the baby oh, in, yes, her, in her head yeah. initially. And so you could figure that one out pretty quickly. Like who was the only one that had a baby? But I mean, you only see the flashbacks um, in the field when Alpha and Beta yes. and when they meet up, when they converge with both of their guardians, let's say. And so, mm-hmm. but that's that's important for a specific reason. And, uh, and I'll get into it. But I want to go back to the whole burning the skin thing, because, you know, knowing what you know now, and obviously we're watching the watching the show for notes where when you revisit that line you kind of get the impression that this lady is looking for some sort of divine intervention because like and i say use those words specifically because <laughs> there's, a, there's a little I, bit of like cultish <laughs> religiosity in some of these scenes but well, i think she was also kind of like suicidal too like no no but that's had... what i mean oh yeah yeah, yeah like like yeah. a divine judgment kind of thing like yeah somebody's and like she... punishing me for what i did Right. And it's almost like she kind of came to terms with it when, because when she kind of has her moment where she kind of flips out in the field a little bit or, you know, and kind of risks their whole kind of formation or whatever. And and Beta is the one who kind of steps in and basically kills those couple of walkers that would have potentially gotten her. Um, And he tells her like, you know, you're going to pay for this. Oh yeah. That's the first time they're in the field. Yeah. The first first time time that they're in the field and he like brings her back to the camp and kind of throws her down and basically kind of told one of the people like, you know, to basically kill her. And when she's on the ground crying, she's like, oh, he's in a better place. He's in a better place. You know, like yes. that sort of thing. So, you know, you, she definitely like is, is uh, conflicted. She's very like and, and full of turmoil over what she did. But she knows he's in a better place because she knows that he was obviously rescued. They picked her up and, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I think even then, like, there's like a transition period, too. Because like, in the, like when the skin is burning scene, you could see that, okay, if Alpha is right, that baby is going to die, you know, because it's a fantasy these communities mm-hmm. can't survive they're trying to cling on to the past they will die eventually i just gave up my baby my baby's doomed if she was with mm-hmm. us she'd be safe or he'd be safe either or um and then like and then i think there's that point at which you know they're in the field and you start to realize that like okay maybe she's trying to reconcile okay but if my baby is in a better place then you know i i been maybe i did sacrifice my baby maybe and she's trying to like resolve like some sort of inner conflict of both how they're choosing to live and the fact that she abandoned her kid you know they, these two things well okay you know if my baby's in a better place what does that mean what is what we're doing mean right like yeah. what are the whispers yeah. why are we doing this if <laughs> like, that's well, the better place why are we here? Yeah. yeah. And then, and what's really interesting about that scene is like you said, like when you, when she starts to say this shit, first of all, it unsettles the pack and like, <laughs> and I, I do want to bring up the deeper place, but like on, on a bigger scale, but like when she comes back, like one of the other whispers is kind of like, it's like, oh, they had livestock, like they had produce, they had like, yeah. Like, don't worry. <laughs> Yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Don't yeah. I was like, shut up. <laughs> Get over yeah. here. We're not going to yeah. listen to this crap. Yeah, she yeah. shut that down. Uh, but it's yeah. like, there's definitely, yeah, the pack is definitely like not convinced. <laughs> You know, they're going along with everything right now, but there's definitely, there's, uh, what is it, dissension in the ranks, basically. Yeah. I mean, it, which has always kind of been there, too. Like, you saw that in last year, too, with that one dude. You know, it's just kind of like, you know, yeah. the, the, oh, yeah. the lack of commitment that can happen. Because it's not, I mean, when you think about it, like, they say what they're doing is natural, but it's not natural <laughs> for humans. No. Which yeah. is, and it goes back to kind of what Luke says about civilization and society and how we how we beat the Neanderthals. And it's, it's community, mm-hmm. you know, and, and culture and art 
art and, and just trying to civilize, right? Mm -hmm. But I was going to say, I think it goes into a deeper point. Like, because I kind of actually want to focus on when Gamma um, took her sister away because she could have done the, I mean, obviously she can't do anything without Alpha's permission. Even Beta can't do anything with Al without Alpha's permission, by the way. Always, it's always on her, which kind of reminds me of Negan, by the way. If, if you remember yeah. our analysis from season eight, like top down. There are parallels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, instead of just like doing something and telling the person to shut up, she just take, which is kind of why I said like, um, there's something to what you, what, who's, who was the one who said it? I think it was Rachel about maybe it's just about survival and not about the religion. <laughs> um, yeah. Because she just takes her sister away. Like there is mm -hmm. that element of like, I don't want you to be associated with that person saying right now, I'm taking you yeah. away from the situation so that when Beta hears it, he's like, oh, they, they went away from that and mm -hmm. they'll, they'll get the, the whole cravat thing and, and the heads on you yeah. know, somewhere else, not <laughs> exactly. on their body. So... <laughs> Like, there's little things that kind of... like Because I'm trying to get a hint of, of, like, any personality from Gamma, from Thora Birch. Well, from Gamma, you know? And it's, it's like, you're trying to figure right this shit out. She, I think right now she's in self-preservation mode. I don't think that she necessarily buys... I don't think that she believes the hype so far. I don't know. And I don't think Beta, like, completely believes her either. He still kind of gives her the side eye and the once over. I don't think that he's fully convinced. <laughs> I think that she knows how to play the game. I think that she wants to survive. And, you know, it's interesting because because, you know, in the comics, you know, Rachel knows there is no gamma. So right. this is like a, you it's know, like the Daryl of character. the Whispers. <laughs> Yeah, it so, is. She is. What? She's, She's like, like the, the Daryl of the Whispers. Yeah, but yeah. the thing is that it makes me wonder, like, you know, what pivotal role is she going to play in the eventual demise of this whole thing? You know, because we know it's going to happen. I just wonder, like, is she going to play a big role in that? Because I don't think that she necessarily believes in the whole whisper kind of like cult, you know, mindset. I think that she's just trying to play the long game, you know, mm -hmm. and look out for like... Yeah. Her. I'm yep, thinking the exact opposite. I totally opposite. agree. I'm, I'm actually I, the opposite. I totally of you guys. agree. Yeah. I am totally I, I, the opposite. I'm really? with you, Carol, though. I think this whole gamma business, I mean, giving her a name has to mean something, right? Like she's yeah. going to, she's going to, you know, she's going to do something important. Like we gave her, like they gave her a name for a reason. Yeah. Um, as long as she doesn't kill Beta or Alpha, <laughs> she can do whatever she wants. <laughs> <laughs> Because those two are already reserved. <laughs> <laughs> A and B already taken. That's right. Find yeah, another that's username. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I almost, I can almost see Gamma joining our group. I mean, I know, I, I know, I yeah. keep saying that. I know, I keep you saying you Beta, right? Did you no, say Gamma. Oh, no, Gamma. Gamma. Oh, Gamma. Oh, Gamma. I can no. see that. I I mean, I can see why you guys are saying that because you guys are on this page of like, you know, Gamma's not body drinking the Kool Aid. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm, I'm I, yeah, the exact I opposite. You think she's I drinking think, the Kool Aid hard? No, I think she yeah, knows what she now. needs to do to stay alive. I think so too. I think, I think no, I think it's part of it. Sure. Because even like, even like when Beta comes back, like, I mean, this is skipping ahead, but like towards the end where Beta like goes to Gamma after her like ceremony, I feel like it's like the next day and he's like, oh, where's like Alpha? And like the way she looked at him reminded me of like when some coworker comes to you and they're like, oh, where's like boss so-and-so, whoever. And they're like, I don't know. I think she went over there. Like, yeah. you know, like she just kind of no, like. She, to, to, to pile on that, she's, she's the employee who just got a promotion and thinks right. she can, you know, strut around in her big girl pants now. Yeah. Like you've been gone for hours where have you been <laughs> right. like the whole thing like you could play like the office music or something like, yeah. <laughs> like it was just it totally gave me that vibe and she's just sort of like yeah that, you know. yeah that little conversation that her and um beta had also kind of i feel like drives our point more carol that she's not quite in it because what is what is she says are you angry with me and what does yeah. he say i feel nothing for you and she's like oh i am also empty <laughs> i'll give you a point on that one yeah <laughs> That, yes, that moment was hysterical. She's like, yes, I am also uh, empty as I'll leave. <laughs> right, right. Okay. It was very awkward. I I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. <laughs> you know what? I, I want Gamma to be uh, to be comic relief. How about that? <laughs> I, 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 I don't know why I see the. I mean, I guess we'll see. But like, I don't know why I see that this going a completely different direction. Only because like uh, th the conversation between her and Alpha is like key to trying to figure this out. Because like like Alpha said, are you um do you regret you what you did? 
and and there's a deeper point to all this, but like, I want to go on the surface stuff, but like, did you regret what you did? There is this weird, interesting eye twitch that Thor Birch is doing. If you have like a HD screen or you maximize your PC or whatever it is, you Mm -hmm. see Thor Birch's like brow, like, Mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. like twitching, Mm -hmm. like a lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, well, no, like literally like jumping up and down. It's fascinating. And it's just, it's so great to have her on the show. I'll just say that much. But, yeah. but, um, just to see that did kind of thing. Did you take it as on. genuine? Yes. You like, did. Okay. Like see, that, that, that one opposite. part of her. You, I, you know, that's the thing. I saw that as genuine only in as much as to say there is always going to be some part of her, no matter how much she's trying to do this just to survive, that recognizes, oh shit, <laughs> I just killed my sister for these clowns. Yeah. But the reason why I say there, the part of me that thinks that she, no, A, knows what she know, needs to do to survive, fine. And I'm totally with with you on that but b that i think she's trying she is actually trading one family for another is the way she kind of talks to alpha afterwards she's trying to be nothing she's trying to be what alpha herself even cannot be mm-hmm. that's what really gets me like mm-hmm. i'm worried i'm not worried i'm just saying i'm <laughs> Because I I bring this up in a question, like when you look through all these interactions between Alpha, just just Alpha and Gamma, there is this interesting situation because we know what happens both in the past and the present with Alpha. We don't know too much about Gamma. That's fine. Let's put that aside. But we do know that she is willing to sacrifice her sister wholeheartedly. Yeah. The amount of times that Alpha has had, the amount of chances that, a- that Alpha has had to throw her daughter into the wolves, she doesn't do it. Come hell or high water, this guy, the dead, you see all the different instances in which she like both in season nine and in this one episode of how many times she could have thrown Lydia to the wolves even though she says she was dead to me from the time she was born she um, says that but she doesn't generally believe that and we see like like her torment you know like when she's like talking to beta like she's literally like if she had hair she'd be pulling her hair out because she's just really kind of tormented where she knows logically that the way she went down da- the way she kind of came down on that other whisper about how like you know the baby wasn't going to survive or whatever like I mean you could say the same thing about Lydia but like you know when she has that kind of argument with Beta and he kind of confronts her about like oh you know you told me like she was dead or whatever and and she gets really defensive and she's like I couldn't you know that's my daughter that's my baby I couldn't like you know just kill her you know like and she has like her bunny I was like oh my gosh you know but that's like the narcissism like it's just her confronting who she thinks she is with who she really is you know but then going back to Gamma Gamma actually does it but that's her sister, though. That's her sister. That's it's different, different than a daughter. Hold up. Dude, you have no. a brother and a sister. You would yeah. never do that. No, um, no. If it's, my it's brother different. if my brother was on one side and my son was on the other, my brother's getting eaten. Exactly. I'm not 100%. even thinking twice about it. Nope. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> Won't even think about it. It's and different. And actually, my, my brother would jump in front of the walkers for his nephew. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't, he didn't you, didn't... you wouldn't have given him the option. <laughs> You'd be but like, no. I would. She literally... No, you have to understand... Gamma literally threw her sister mm-hmm. onto the walkers. Mm-hmm. When you look at that scene, like she mm-hmm. could have taken her sister, pulled them apart, like pulled them both out of the harm's way. But the I thing- think I think her si- I think she saw her sister as a liability. Her sister was yeah. going to eventually get her killed. But I don't think she was gonna be, Yeah, her sister was going to be a li- liability for the both of them. And after pulling a stunt like that, there was no way she was going to survive. She no. was going to be killed off one way or another. Either she was going to be killed right then and there by like Beta or Alpha, or she was going to get killed the way she did by like the Walkers. But there was no yeah. way she was getting out of that situation. Like, right. Alive. Right. That was better. Better the Walkers than Alpha, I suppose. Maybe. I guess that no. is that what you're saying, basically. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it was going to happen no matter what, basically. But that would have been way more it. humane, though, I think, in a weird kind of uh, ironic way. Like, wouldn't the whispers yeah. at least have kind of, like, make a clean cut? or what? It would have been one cut. It wouldn't have been, like, death by a thousand <laughs> yeah. bites. Yeah. But it, there would have been some level of punishment to make an example of her for attacking, like, basically the pack leader. You know what yeah. I mean? I think Gamma saw an opportunity to also prove herself and say, look, I'm not like my sister. I I am committed. I, you know what I mean? If they, if she would have waited if she would have attempted to save her sister and then like you said carol they later killed her for i mean they were going to kill her earlier they're definitely going to kill her now yeah gamma doesn't want to be associated with that yeah so i think she saw an opportunity to say look i'm gonna i'm gonna survive and i'm gonna do it by sacrificing my sister yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't know 
why I'm laughing. I don't know either. You gals <laughs> disturb me. Like, to, like, say the sentence to be like, you know, sacrifice my sister. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it was, it was a power move, right? Yeah. I mean, and it worked. Yeah. Cause, it worked. Cause, yeah. Alpha now sees her as an asset. So. It, which, and then she subsequently gives her a designation. But, yeah. And that, that's why I like to go back, back and forth between Alpha <laughs> and um, Gamma. Because, like, Alpha can't even do that. The, you know, maintain her power by not compromising her um, her ethos. Mm. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's that's what I keep going back to, right? Because if you keep doing... Gamma you- thinks she did kill Lydia. They all think she did. Oh, they yeah. all do. And then Beta yeah. only finds out at the end of the episode. Right. right. Like, right. he also is like... And w- hence the look from before, like, A, being surprised that she... First of all, like, it's weird because last year you see the look and it's like he's he's surprised that she, kill, he, she kills Lydia. And then mm-hmm. we find out from this episode why that is. Because she fought tooth and nail to keep Lydia. Mm-hmm. Which is something we only understand. Well, I mean, we kind of probably understood it already. But, like, now we understand even more that, like, even though she says things that say, like, we have to be like the dead. We have to, we have no names. We don't love anything. We're empty. <laughs> he knows deep down, you know, that's, that, that's just not something. There's some things you can't compromise on, you know? Right. Yeah. But I, I think we kind of made made why yeah. this is and th- by the way this is kind of like and just to kind of like tie this in a knot this is why i'm more concerned about gamma because gamma has what it takes at least she's she's willing to make the hard call and we've said mm-hmm. this before but whereas alpha ha- is already compromised maybe she's working out that comp the that that error in her software maybe she's <laughs> we're gonna see how she confronts that and i'll say this much because i want to kind of go a little bit deeper now because there's a narrative element to the sisters and alpha um when you look at the two sisters they're like completely different and they're both representations of alpha you have the mother mm-hmm, true yeah. who mm-hmm. abandons her child technically right mm-hmm. they literally lydia and her baby abandoned to these people who live yeah. a better life but um right and then you have the other side of alpha who is trying to be a certain way and then you have the idea of alpha who is alpha herself who exists in the world or what they see her as at least and you have these two sides literally having these conversations with each with each other and they're both the what the internal conflict of alpha like Mm -hmm. represented in character form no, that mm-hmm. is a very good point. I didn't think about that, but you're right. I mean, it's based through the sisters, you know, you kind of see both aspects and which is why she is sympathetic to the sister when she's brought to her, you know, like when Alpha requests like the first time around where right. she has like the meltdown and they, you know, you know, Beta brings her to her and in the, her little kind of like, the seems deeper, like a, you know, deeper place, her, the deeper place, like her nest or whatever. <laughs> And this um, is all like inter- like <laughs> stuff that happens inside you. Like, okay, we're going to go <laughs> deeper inside of us. Place. And I really like thought that, I mean, I was like, oh, she's in for a horrible death, you know? And meanwhile, like, no, you know, child. that's not what happened, you know? <laughs> Did right. she like squeeze her head really hard? Why did she scream like she did? Maybe just out of fear because she was yeah. anticipating what was coming. I think. Yeah. I mean, the that's way she had, the way she was holding on to it, I thought she was like squeezing her head or something. I'm like, would that I hurt? I think them? she <laughs> was a little though. That's the okay, thing. Like, yeah. like yeah. you kind of want to get the little scaries in her yeah. before like, you go. I could, <sighs> I could kill you right now. I should yeah. kill you right now. But right. instead, I'm gonna. There's there's that little bit of a rattle, a squeeze, yeah. and a stare yeah. into the yeah. eyes, yeah. and then it's like. <sighs> I thought she was gonna like. <laughs> I, I know. Was gonna snap yeah. her neck. And you know, if she was smart, she would have let her too. Don't resist; it's gonna hurt more. Um, but I, I was about to scream when I saw that scene. I was because the music was. <laughs> I made yeah. a note of the music. It was on another yeah, level. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But look at also Gamma's reaction to that. Like hearing that scream, there's a bit of a reaction, but she knows a how to play the game. But I think mm-hmm. also like it's finally over in a way. Yeah. yeah. When she comes out, she's stunned. Oh, definitely surprised. Oh yeah. yeah. She was stunned. Yep. It's almost as if, and look, throughout the entire episode, she's annoyed. She can't even tell her sister. That's the difference, too. Okay. The, and this is why I make the assertion that I make. Every single time the sister goes, you wouldn't leave me behind. There's the two distinct times, right? Like, I should have left you behind. And she goes, oh, you wouldn't really leave me behind when they were, like, resting. Mm-hmm. Resting. What is this? I don't know. 
<laughs> I guess sleeping arrangements. I don't know. Like, Parallel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but that's the thing. Like she still can't even say it. And then we go back to Alpha in past and present, which she does. And mm -hmm. don't ever leave me again. You don't want to leave me. And then like, um, like the, the kind of duality of her in the past going like, don't you ever leave me again? Like at the end of the episode. Yeah. And then like when, even when Lydia in, in the height of her pride, uh, Alpha's pride towards Lydia for saying like, I don't want the bunny. Um, I want to be like you. I want to be right. strong like you. And she goes, I love you, mama. And she goes, she still can't. No. But at the same time, you know that she still can't do it, but you know that she feels it. Obviously, yeah. because she's so proud and she sees love and it's like, I want you to be like me. That's great. Mm -hmm. But yeah, then she has to she roll it tells, back. She also tells Lydia, you know, when she says, I want to be like you. And she said, I've waited so long for you to hear that or to say that. But right. if Can't you're help not herself. like me, if yeah. you're not like me, I'm going to leave you behind. Right. But yeah. we know that that's not true. We've seen that. Right. Yeah. I know mean, that, that's she the did difference. leave her behind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she did well, do what she said she would do. I Sure, but <laughs> if you remember the scene just before, like just before she goes away, because when Lydia spots her at the fair, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's that scene where it seems like, "Come on, we gotta go," and like right. he does, she mm -hmm. does not want to abandon her. She does not want to leave her, even though she said she. No. See ya. She doesn't want to, but she does. <laughs> no, but she should have cut her off if that was the case. I'm gonna leave you, you leave you behind, never to come back again, right? Yeah. First of all, to mm -hmm. prove it to her pack. If she did bring her back, what would that look like? Right? Yeah. Well, what's going to happen when they show up and Lydia's there waiting at the front lines? Ooh, dog. <laughs> I think she's thinking yeah. about that too. Like if she, well, maybe she's not thinking. Mm. I, she seemed pretty gung ho to get back. I spent, you know, when Beta told her about the fire at the border, and she's like, yeah. "We gotta go back. If they cross, if they cross, we're gonna punish them." Like, hello, your daughter's with them. What do you think's gonna happen when you show up? Of course, she's gonna be there. You, you, you bring up a very excellent point. Very, <laughs> and this has to play into what happens, and especially with the nunchuck bow staff thing. Yeah, right. I, I'm gonna leave it there. I don't <laughs> know. Awesome. I kind of want to see that in action before i'm judging it but i want to see it in action because that looks goofy <laughs> but uh, i do want to see that how that's wielded but yeah anyway so but that is i digress like that is a key point because yeah if they do go into battle which it seems like from the sneak peeks they will be um or something or they just take the horde and i think maybe that is the strategy maybe the fact that they aren't going to use their own people to do this yeah, is the strategy yeah they weaponize their horde that's their mm -hmm. weapon right right or if they do use their people a limited amount that they know will you know <laughs> be you know slaughtered the pawns. yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah oh i will say one thing because i did just see it now like i kind of want to roll it back to beta for a second because i do want to talk about beta more because i like that we hashed out all this alpha stuff because the <laughs> one thing that i thought was really cool from this episode aside from like all the other cool stuff about beta and what 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 this means who he is blah 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 for real that one scene in the parking garage where he, where he goes oh he goes, that's that's the, the, the chewbacca that's growl yeah. yeah like well more like a like a what did that sound like like it's like do you remember harry potter the uh the dementors no. like I'm not a potter head or like or like even like stranger things like the demi gorgons it's like oh, well. yeah. yeah that kind of sound and like yeah. i just thought that was it's, it is something that we have not seen before by it's the way primal. yeah but like 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 a human voice making a walker sound i thought okay we're breaking some interesting ground right here like like seeing that sort of thing on the screen it's kind of i i'm like geeking out over it because like <laughs> i like when we see things that we haven't seen before that of course we thought about before like what if you just like walked out in the world and went <laughs> you know like like alpha does in the beginning or yeah in the beginning yeah, yeah can you can you survive you know like so but i thought it was cool it was almost like calling them to him and yeah. then naturally putting his hand against the fence mm -hmm. and flipping up the switch i thought mm -hmm. that was a cool kind of subtle move like he moves like the dead he, he he's like what if the dead did this okay we can open up the gate you know yeah i want to talk about something very specific because it's like a thorn in my mind and i'm trying to and it, not that it's a big deal or anything but i i when i first watched the episode i'm like oh beta's is gay no it was his best friend i know that they said that but it's bothering me because i actually thought it was a brother at first yeah and then they confirmed best friend so i was like okay friend. yeah like i mean again like yeah. the big breadcrumbs in the articles it's best friend yeah. 
Yeah, I thought it was like some sort of relation for a moment. I, I actually like, thought he was gay. Like, I and I thought that that kind of made sense because they don't because Alpha and Beta don't have this we, this romantic relationship. No, I, thought, I disagree. Oh, I disagree. Really? I don't mm-hmm. think so. Do you think? Oh, I that's interesting. Do. I love how we're talking about this. <laughs> you know what? I, I understand what you're saying. There ah. are moments like at the end when they go through their little pact and they like intertwine mm-hmm. their hands and all that, but somehow. You're right, right. But you say packed because you're already kind of like, ah, doesn't, I don't see it, right? I just, uh, the thing with beta is that like, and we kind of like, we're talking about it a little bit, Rach, on the like, when we were having a little discussion on Facebook about it, it's just that I just don't know if, because we see that he was in like a mental institution. So like, I wonder like, this is he somebody who has like some sort of like mental disability and he's sort of like a kind of survival sort of kind of person and alpha kind of like even when she took off like lifted his mask his ski mask and looked at him it was like a wolf like a tender expression like somebody who's like a big gentle giant in a way you know like i i don't know like yes. no no i of, agree yeah i'm laughing I because do. it's the way like oh yeah it's, it's true yeah okay so it's like i i yeah i don't know i don't know I'm not sure yeah Jerry's out. Yeah, I, I, and the only reason why, like, now we're not, because I was certain that, that there was just, n- like, there was nothing between them in that sense. Because, I mean, yes, it's primal. Like, they talk about prime being primal, being pack animals or animals, and just being natural and being, like, one with the dead. Which, again, like, you don't feel anything, you don't love anything. I mean, you could have sex, and that seems to be okay because we have a baby, which they abandon, um, <laughs> which animals do whatever like they have a sacrifice or they yeah. eat it whatever um mm-hmm. but like when i whenever i see those two i just think there's too much going on for them to have that primal relationship do you know what i mean like mm-hmm. there's see, too to much me, they, they remind me of, of wolves that you know mate for life they're you know hmm. to the age now where they're not reproducing so they don't <laughs> do the nasty but but they're still they're still mates yeah i, I hear you i hear you i, I i'm only saying i'm only laughing <laughs> because I'm thinking of like now Ryan Hurst and Samantha Morton and I'm like oh right. they're two old fogies that just don't oh, have, get it right. on they're not old but I, I'm just I, I saying know, they're, they're, the age where they're not bringing a newborn in into the world yeah. you know they're yeah. they they would have had kids Lydia's age you know you know and I just yeah, yeah I see them as as um you know mates not I don't know I don't even know if I would say well I mean a little bit romantic but mostly like uh, hierarchy you know mm-hmm. we're we're at the top we're your we're your alpha and beta we're the we're at the top we're the mm-hmm. head couple <laughs> yeah right right i think that there's something to be said about that relationship and it's I mean, maybe it's not romantic but there's when you have that sort of bond when you have that sort of like companionship partnership because i mean for all intents and purposes that's alpha's companion i mean he knows her best you know more than anybody yeah. else really and she knows him best yeah right mm-hmm. which is kind of why i'm kind of like and that's like, I, that's intimacy that's yeah. their intimacy yeah. Well, that, and that's kind of like why I'm saying they wouldn't knock boots or whatever. Only because to be that way, you have to love someone. And they don't love, they don't feel anything. No. Which, and if you meet, you know, I, I'm. do you know what I mean? Like, I guess it could be about I sex. Do what, but I do know what you mean. But no, but having I, the goods with, on each other, yeah. it's... It, it I, kind of I, mingles the thing, and it, I don't know. Yeah, I want to call bullshit. First of all, when they say they don't love anything, that's that's bull because well, people yeah. love yeah. Them without that's even beside the acknowledging. Point. <laughs> yeah, without even acknowledging it, they obviously love each other, and yeah. you know maybe not in a down and dirty kind of way, but just like Carol said, a companionship. You know? Wait a yeah. minute, I just thought of a perfect comparison. Daryl and Carol. Carol and Daryl. Boom! Yep. I love how yeah. you saw it in you my just, face. The light, yeah. the light bulb just went off. <laughs> well, we didn't say it out loud. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's true. No, like, I, how interesting is that, parallels. though? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The mm-hmm. relationship is beyond yes. that. Like when And you we just had that through, episode, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was happening at the same time. It was. Because exactly. like, we went backwards. <laughs> this is yeah. blowing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Yeah. By the way, I'm sorry. I kept, I kept interrupting. I was just like, no, wow. No. But it is. It's like, yeah. which I have to say, I do like the continuity aspect of this episode. I did appreciate the fact that it was like when we saw like the meat. Well, not the meteor, like the satellite. The satellite. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, technically. like it all kind of connected. <laughs> yeah. Like as soon as we saw that, then it was like, okay, we know where we are in the yeah. timeline. You know, it's like, ah, oh, okay. You know, and a little bit geographically too, because yeah. where are they? Yeah. 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 100% too. Because they were on their way. Yes, they were on the, when 
near the end of the episode, they were on their way to the old camp, right? Yes. I right? Think, right. Towards think so. the end. Yeah. When uh, when the sister kind of went, boop, 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 cuckoo. Um, <laughs> Uh, the, the throw the thing, the gamma thing, and then the yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not though. The only thing that throws me off is that that thing at the end happens. It does happen at the old camp, but how far away are the camps from each other? Because you you have to remember, like Gamma goes, she went that away and that away towards mm-hmm. the old camp. Mm-hmm. Blah blah blah. Yes. Yeah. Were they already on the way to the camp? Maybe they're in a rest area near the woods. Maybe they're already on the way to because that wasn't so clear. I mean, it's clear that they're going to the old camp. Well, and she she spent some time building that, you know, yeah. Lydia Memorial, um, which she so they had been been doing. hanging out there for a little while. Yeah, yeah, they had been hanging out in that area for for a minute. It almost felt like they were in hibernation mode, like because when we saw last season, like the whole storm happened, like the winter storm, and you know everybody was kind of like we don't know where they went during that storm, like in terms of like the whisper horde. Like we know, like obviously, like you know what happened with the kingdom shutting down and you know having to like leave and all of that. But you know the whispers, we don't know necessarily where they went during that time to hunker down or whatever but yeah it almost kind of felt like they went into like hibernation for a little bit and Mm -hmm. now they're you know out of it they went further (laughs) south for the winter it it seemed like that from the cutscene with the with the whip on the the switch on the uh the inside of the arm which is painful Mm -hmm. uh if you've ever had it um but um i mean it seems like they had been making their way back or at Mm -hmm. least into their own kind of general region you know so but but the thing that wasn't clear that you made clear rachel was that and i think it deserves repeating is that um she had been doing this ever since they kind of came back, like in their new camp close by, mm-hmm. not near the border where the enemy is. Right. Um, but she had kept going back and forth and making this thing. Mm-hmm. And it's just the it's the subconscious, let's say, because obviously her ego, she's trying <laughs> to like embrace this ego, this narcissism. Um, mm-hmm. But her subconscious is not letting her. She's wandering off. She's like, I need somewhere to put these feelings <laughs> I need to make a nest, a baby bird nest, a giant big bird nest, actually. (laughs) It was. It was wild to see. I had had so many thoughts going through my head. And and the first one, my first thought was like, she's building this like in hopes that she'll come back and she'll be like, you know, Lydia, look what I, look what I made for you. Like, I I missed you. Look what I, look what I did for you. You you should come back. You know, I do care. Look how much I care. Yeah. And then I'm like, that just, first of all, she could never show the rest of the whispers that side. They would right. kill her. I mean, or abandon yeah. her or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So, so then I'm like, okay, maybe this is like a memorial. Maybe she's not expecting her to come back, but this is her way of saying goodbye almost. But, mm-hmm. or- but I don't. So do you really think that though? I, right? I I don't. I mean, I I'm kind of still bouncing all over the place, and and maybe yeah. she is too. Maybe that's why I yeah. can't nail it down. She doesn't yeah. even really know what's going on or why yeah. she's building it. I, I I'll, I'll agree to that because uh, <laughs> that's that's kind of where I, where I'm at. Uh, Carol, does it strike you that it? Because I want to I want to see if what you think. Does it kind of look like that tub that she was washing Lydia up in a little oh. bit? You know what? That's a good point. Like it did kind of have a similar sort of like oblong sort of shape to it like it wasn't like a circular little like nest it definitely had like a similar kind of shape i mean maybe that was the intention to kind of like harken back to that like when she would like you know tend to her basically right well the more or the moment to memorialize that moment where she wanted to make her mama proud mm-hmm. you know yeah which kind of says a lot about loud <laughs> about her because like there's that okay you kind of want to sympathize with her but she really is a piece of shit <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, she's... In she's, the end. Yeah, I mean, she definitely, like... She's not a mother of the year at all. <laughs> yeah. She's not winning any awards. Right. At all. But, like, she's really conflicted. Like, she has this confliction with, like, having to be strong and, like, wanting to just kind of, like, succumb to this sort of, like, nurturing instinct that she can't quite give up yet. Like, she can't quite shed that innate instinct to protect and nurture, like, her her cub, basically. Like, she can't quite yeah. shed that. Yeah. Right. You know, Lydia, let me think before I say this out loud, Lydia's the only person, person who still had a name. She She's the only That's person that, that Alpha or Beta or anybody actually called by name. She was the only one who got to keep her name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's, there's, I mean, there's some significance to that too. You know, Alpha didn't, yeah. um, 
you know, erase her daughter. That's, that's not what, that's not what I'm trying to say. What, what am I trying to say? She didn't take away her identity. She wanted Lydia to know, yeah. She wanted Lydia to know who she was. Yeah. She wasn't an animal. She was Lydia. And even yeah. that could be kind of explained by like saying, Oh, this is a power move. Like I'm going to give her a name and none of you could do anything about it. Maybe. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I, okay. That's the only way I could think of to explain that away. Sure. To assert a power over, over the rest of the group. Yeah. Cause I'm the alpha. I get to do what I want. Yeah. Yeah, I think she just always saw her daughter as a person. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to get into like the deeper things about like unmasking and what that means. Like all those little, little moments where like, let's say Alpha, te- you know, takes the mask off of Gamma and then she takes the yeah. mask off the sister and she takes the mask off herself at different points in time. And it kind of goes back. So if, and I'm not, I don't want to get into this, but I kind of want you to take what I said about what these two people actually represent within Alpha and then mm-hmm. just pay attention to the moments where um, even, and this is all to kind of go back to the field where that moment happens where the sister kind of takes off her own mask you know and and notice what and just kind of like tie that into what being that they are kind of physical manifestations of these different pieces of alpha Mm -hmm. when she sees the okay so she says to gamma that she made everything right in my head again right you know Mm -hmm. like uh you know i see things clearer now like i I don't feel it anymore but when she sees the carrier in the field yeah like the the walker with the carrier the baby carrier in the front the baby bjorn (laughs) Yeah, that is, that's the trigger. Yeah, but what, that's when you start seeing the flashbacks, but there's one specific flashback that's not something we've seen before. When Alpha tells her to bring him. Right. Bring him with you. Did you see that, Carol? No, when was this? This one specific flash where she says, bring the child, like, like, with the, she, yeah, she pulls him up like that. Really? She knew. Oh, she knew. She knew immediately that baby was going to die. She, she knew. She was going to sacrifice the baby. And I think, again... But for a power- specific purpose. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. She wanted to show our group how ruthless she is. Uh-huh. Oh my and, god! And then it kind of takes you all the way back to the beginning of this episode. Mm-hmm. She has no problem sacrificing somebody else's child, right? But not her own. No, not her but own. it goes it goes way deeper than that. Like she needed to do that to kind of prove to herself that she could do it for herself. But she's she's so like sadistic that she's putting other people through her problems. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Th- th- yeah. I, does that make okay. sense? What I'm saying? I th- yeah. I think yeah. Like she's so committed to her own ethos that she. She's willing to pull up all the other roots, you know, like she's willing to decimate other and to even have to do that. Shouldn't that tell you already how bad your philosophy is? Yeah. <laughs> like that you have to yeah. like raise the earth to kind of make a point. Yeah. She knew what she was doing. She didn't have mm-hmm. to do it too. Yeah. Scorched yeah. earth. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I mean, I think I think we took care of a lot of things. I do want to go back to beta though because we talked about breadcrumbs. We talked about this. I mean, again, I'm so pissed off. But apparently, he's a musician. Apparently, he's a big one. Uh, <laughs> apparently, yeah, a, meaning a popular one. Yeah. Uh, which is why she recognizes him and like, oh, well, uh, whatever. But I, I do want to go back to this friend and like, and the connection to the bunny because Beta, both Beta and Alpha have a secret a compromising secret about each other and it's that they both still cling to the past. Beta will not take off his mask specifically because it is a tie to his past, to his best friend. Mm-hmm. And you know, and and given that their ethos is that there is no past, there's only this, you don't feel anything, you know, it's like they have the goods on each other. Mm-hmm. So like the two most important figures in their religion, which I, I want to bring up another scene in a second, like are the most compromised. <laughs> Like, when you think about it, like they do not port their own belief system upon themselves. You know what does that say? They they fucked up. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, no, I, no kidding. I, I yeah. love poking holes at this because it just kind of it just it pisses me off, but it's so compelling. <laughs> like it's so great to see this. But the thing is that they're dragging all these other people along with them. Right. I, I only had one thought when I saw the bunny at the end when she's you know had the bunny in her hand and he's like, "You still have that?" And I I thought, where has she been keeping it? Like we're like <laughs> you walk right like you walk everywhere. How is this the first well, time he's seen the rabbit? It's probably at the camp at the at the old yes. camp, and she revisits it and and gives it a little bath and the little baby bird. Okay, all right. Oh my God. <laughs> She's not carrying it around with her. No, no. I'm like but, they don't. It's not like they have. They don't have backpacks or anything. They don't bring anything with them. Like she couldn't yeah. hide it somewhere. Right. <laughs> yeah. So she has yeah. to stash it away. Yeah. For seven years. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> hmm, makes you think, though, a little bit. Right? Um, yeah. But uh, but Beta has his friend's face on the mm-hmm. entire time, and that's always on him. Always. Mm-hmm. You know? So that's... Off. And nobody knows that because they think it's... I mean, he's the one who... I mean, when you think about it, that's why they do what they do, but they don't know why they... That, that's the reason why they're doing what... Why, why they're doing what they're doing. With do the, you know what I mean? With the masks? Yeah. See, Beta's... Yeah, sure, was there's a, like dual, dual purposes. <laughs> but not for the others. The others is just well, like, okay, this is why we do it because we want to be like the dead we this right. is we were us- told we were told to <laughs> Right. Yeah. 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 Well, it's also like, and I wrote this near the end. It's like the masks are like a fake it till you make it kind of thing. It's not just to blend in with the environment. It's a Pretend religious. You're dead till you're dead. Yeah. It's like it's like yeah. to get them into like you know how like masks kind of like cosplay. You you feel Literally. like you are that person. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, it's not just yeah. to look like them and have it to impress other people. And it is about that a little bit too, and that's fine. Um, and there's a pride thing to it too. But that kind of ties in with the with the personality. You kind of feel like you are that person and yeah. so having the you know clothes make the man you know that kind of old expression <laughs> like like you wear the mask and you feel like batman <laughs> you feel like batman there you, you go like that sort of thing yeah, oh so the one thing i the only thing i wanted to bring up after this is the like the religion culty thing when the sisters are talking to each other in the bed there's this weird line <laughs> like an an alpha sacrifice her only daughter <laughs> just like Jesus, sac- God sacrificed his only son, Jesus. And that, like, I was just like, oh my God, they're really getting into it in this one. <laughs> like, like an alpha forsake her only child. Like, literally, like, the wording on that was kind of like that. And I was just kind of like, I I'm, I like it, though. I like how it's like, there's this religiousness to it. The mm-hmm. guardians and, you know, like how, which, did they, did they, and that's kind of like why, why I liked having you here, because it's kind of like, did they kind of get into that at that kind? of level in the comics like the kind of almost we pray at the altar of this sort of thing right no it wasn't no. as complicated right no, no it was just had... sick <laughs> it was just yeah it was just sick they were just yeah. sick and demented people there was no right. religious aspect there was no religious aspect there was no dimension or, or or basically background as to how and why and you know yeah. how do these people get here and why are they doing what they do it's like no it's just like these are just psychologists freaks and that's just what they are so it's not complicated it's not complicated but but the thing is that's why i was saying it's like and and rachel you know you brought it up like at the beginning too it's like they've just done a really good job fleshing out this storyline because if they didn't it would have been really hokey like people would have been like what you know like what the fuck is this like people wearing like zombie faces it's like (laughs) you know what i mean it could have gone it could have been really campy and hokey and kind of people would have been like, oh, whatever. Yeah. So I feel like they've done a good job making it much more fleshed out with a lot of like depth to it and a lot of depth to alpha, a lot of depth to beta so that it's there's more to it instead of just like, oh, these are these weirdos, you know, <laughs> that walk around with like, you know, walker skins on their face, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I totally agree. Yeah. So you, so you like the changes. That's kind of like what I wanted to ask you. Yeah. Because I like pointing out these changes because I kind of want to throw it back to you and be like this oh, yeah. i like this what do you I, think I, well, this, is, this is a really easy storyline to elaborate on because you know there is no backstory in the comics they i mean we could literally the only thing we know is a little hint of about beta and and even yeah. that could get thrown out which it obviously is <laughs> yeah. but i like that that there's basically this this blank canvas for them to completely write these backstories and really get us involved in these in these villains we've never we've never known this much about any of the villains past ever mm-hmm. ever 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 so and, and i say it you i know like what it say. Well, what are you gonna say yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry on me i mean right oh yeah. oh no because <laughs> a lot of people have been bringing that up by the way because i've been seeing it all these different groups are like so we get so much backstory and like behind the scenes on the whispers <laughs> but like no nigga backstory i'm not mad at like the alpha backstory and all that because i think if they're doing right. a great job with the whisper so it's like right. i do pre- i completely appreciate it now now, if we would have gotten like, you know, if we had a Heath backstory or a Sherry backstory, then I'm flipping over tables. Like, that's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's when it's going to be like, no, we're not having a whole episode on this. Like, that's the point where I'm going to, we're going to have words. Like, <laughs> but for right. Alfred, this, it makes sense because I've always... <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I always come back to that. I'm like, he's yeah. Negan backstory. That's like, yeah. 
There was a point where we didn't really care, I think. And then, like, the more time went on, you, the, the desire to get it just, at least with you, Carol, like, the desire just yeah. increased, like, a little bit more. But it just felt like it was coming at some point. Like, we're, you know, we're going to get this. And, the, and now at this we, point, we like, got I, crumbs. That's the thing. Like, we got crumbs we got when we were crumbs. covering it. So you were like, okay, I'm satiated. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> Things are well, okay. And I feel like they've done a good job, like, with Negan, too, like, fleshing out his character, too. Right. Like, because that's the thing. It's like to do a good villain, you really have to give them dimension you know like you can't have them be like just flat one dimensional otherwise like it's hard to really kind of be like you know enthralled by the character it just just sort of becomes like oh okay what mm -hmm. dastardly deed are they doing today you know like it's there's this whiplash right exactly <laughs> you know like there's just nothing like, you know compelling about the character. yeah you know right oh, yeah yeah you know, i know what you that, mean. but <laughs> That so this is like a real treat for you. That's that's kind of like what it boils down to. Because I'm I'm just because yeah. every time they get into the because some people could say like, okay, it's, there it's what's this religion thing? And it's like okay, this, do you have to complicate it? I can easily <laughs> see which some people like when they when it came to the Negan backstory like like rattling of the cage, like they're kind of like I mean they're okay with it, but like there's a little bit of that feeling of like uh where is Negan's backstory? Like I don't I, no. like, this is nice. But like, what, what about <laughs> yeah? What about Negan? Yeah. I tell you what I'm looking forward to mm. when Beta and Negan interact for the first time. Apparently, that is happening. Yeah, oh it's gonna happen. The and one liners in that scene are going yes. to be quoted forever. <laughs> They're gonna be priceless. Yeah, be priceless. Oh that I'm very looking forward to seeing. I cannot wait. I'm, I cannot. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of lucky in, in some... I mean, me and other people who haven't read the comics are kind of lucky in one respect because we get to see it with fresh eyes. Mm -hmm. You do get, like, the opportunity to see where things differ, and they will. <laughs> mm -hmm. But totally. the luxury that we have is that we get to see if this shakes out in comparison to all the other stuff in the TV show. Yeah. And so we get to see if it's really hokey, right? Yeah. I mean, I, and that's why I do what I do. I, I have, like... A couple volumes already that I'm just dying to read. That I just can't. I can't bring myself to do it because there's a part of me that just wants a firewall, you know, from everything, just to kind of have that perspective. I'm. This is a treat. This is so great. I, I really enjoy comparisons, though. Like even uh -huh. like yeah, even when movies are re. Well, okay, first of all, I hate remake remade movies. Like almost all of them, I hate when they remake a movie because they ruin it and absolutely suck it up. But like books to movies, like it's always fun to make to compare the different and things that are added and things they take out and right so, yeah and things like, that work here that don't work there yeah, right I know because we talked about this last week too it's great yeah yeah like the comic book whisperer storyline would not play well on tv I, yeah. These, I feel like these backstories are necessary in order, like you said, you know, Carol, th that way these characters don't come off hokey, you know what I mean? And just yeah. weirdos, like there is a reason and now we know the reason and it's almost going to make them scarier. Yeah. You, you can know this. You can play <laughs> the whispers as they are in the comic book, but there's, you would have to do it in a way that is just anti the way this, this, this series has been filmed. Mm -hmm. The series has been filmed kind of close close to the ground, you know, no, like, uh, no, like, crazy post color, uh, color gradients and stuff like that. It's fairly warm, usually, like, whereas fear is kind of fairly cool in terms of mm -hmm. color palette. Mm -hmm. So, like, the way you would have to play the whispers off as is kind of like, almost in secret, dark lighting, like, almost like a concept rather than people, Yes, you know, and mm -hmm. it just doesn't work, you know, okay. so you have to, the thing that makes them scary is their religion. The thing that makes them scary is how convinced they are of that mm -hmm. this way is the right way, mm -hmm. you know? And, and that is what they kind of just blow up, you know? And that what they expand on screen. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but you could do that. Like other shows do that and it can work, but those shows aren't consistent throughout. Mm. And that's that's why you see like when you get to like season three or season four of a certain show and they try to do something like that. Like, I mean, I always think of like the, the perfect show is to kind of do this with is kind of like Z Nation because they try all these different things. They try to change their tone. <laughs> they try to... Oh my god. I mean the first few seasons yeah. the, their tone was all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> they go from heartwarming to completely ridiculous. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's... I mean, the whole thing's completely ridiculous. Let's just be honest. But yeah, that's, that's like the, the one vein that's, that, that's like throughout. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
that's why you have to like if you watch this long you you can't watch this long without appreciating that that about it yeah. so yeah no you have to watch it because it's awful <laughs> <laughs> what a shit show yeah. i mean that's like up there with sharknado right i mean you watch it because it's awful <laughs> no but that's the difference like sharknado you know what you're getting into like okay i'm yeah. watching a car accident and i know i am and i'm appreciating it <laughs> Like with Z Nation, it's like yes, it's a, it's a drama about a a car accident. No, wait, hold on. What is this? <laughs> Two funny cars crashing. Wait, hold on. Why why is the guy walking out bloody? It's like hold on. I came in here for one thing and I got something else. It's and like, now there's a cheese wheel. Yeah, exactly. Because you can always throw that at the end. Yeah. Yep. And Carol's looking at us like. What show is this? This, this sounds like what is one this one nonsense show. bullshit. You, if you watch this, I mean, I recommend it. I, I think it's great. <laughs> but just, just know, know what, know what it is before you get into it. You know what I mean? Don't, don't expect The Walking Dead because it's, it ain't. It's, it's, it's difficult to show. know what it is. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. That's yeah. what it is. <laughs> yes, we digressed hardcore on that one, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> but it looks like uh, it looks like as a result of all this compromise compromising compromising like they're going to be facing off they they there's no other choice but for alpha to kind of because at the beginning of the episode you have beta saying asserting the fact that like we've been away too long we need to assert our dominance um mm-hmm. but at the end of by the end of the episode it's kind of like well you're too compromised alpha you, or we, there's this compromised situation and there's the threat to be compromised from what you did at this old camp so we have to do something now <laughs> we just yeah. Have to, we have to. We yeah, gotta make. Control. We gotta make our own people believe that we're threatening. Do mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So like, it went from yeah. one thing to something completely different, and the approach is still the same. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I just find that kind of funny and fascinating because, and Alpha was so sure in the beginning, and now she's completely like, you know, like yeah. shook. Yeah. So I it just yeah. this this episode is a journey, and it happens so quick in some in some respects. Like, so if you don't slow down and like really pick everything apart you don't see just all the lines kind of connecting having seen alpha the way we did this episode you know how very clearly she still cares about lydia right i mean it's obvious that she still cares about lydia do either of you are either of you worried that lydia might switch teams again if she realize if she truly believes her mother loves her I is she gonna about switch, is she because gonna of that one scene the, where well, she didn't well be... i mean up, up to this point we we believed alpha to be emotionless right like like she had no problem basically throwing Lydia away. I mean, she wanted to keep her, but at the time, I at the time I was thinking she just wanted her back, you know, as a as a power move. Like that's my yeah. daughter, give her back. It's my property. You yeah. have right. what I want. I'm it. with you on that one. Yeah, but um, now, but I knew I now, knew better. Like, See, and I, I, at the time, I just, I, I didn't. I really, I saw her as ruthless because I had comic book alpha in my brain. See, that's right. where, that's where our thoughts differ. That's great. I had a, I had a preconceived notion about who she, who she was. Yeah. After having watched this episode, that's not the alpha we're getting. Yeah, she we're clearly not. cares for her daughter. And yeah. I think if Lydia sees that, she might jump ship and get back on the mom wagon. That's true. Well, and I a- think- After killing like Henry also, though? Sure. But- she She's known her mom a lot longer than she's known Henry. Yeah, like, I mean, she knew Henry for like five minutes. Come on. Like, they were not like together. No, that was like a blip on the radar. Well, we have to play by the rules the show sets, though, you know, whether we like it or not. But even at Alexandria, like, (laughs) Megan even, you know, told, you know, Lydia at Alexandria, like, you know, make sure, you know, you to watch your back because he knows that, like, the first moment that they say, oh, okay, you know, we saw like a whisper mask or whatever. It's like, Oof. they're giving her the side eye because yeah. it's like, they feel the same way. Like, are you going to like all of a sudden turn code and like go be with your mom or are you, mm-hmm. you going to lure your mom over here? Like they don't trust that she, that she won't do the same either. I, I wouldn't. I, I if do. I was an Alexandrian, I, I would be, I would have to feel the same way. Right. Yeah. They're yeah. going to play with that. Definitely. I love mm-hmm. that though. I, mm-hmm. And and we do see a little bit of that in the comics. Right. I and mean, we do get a bit of that. Right. Right? Uh, like that, that kind of like propaganda, silence the whispers, or is or are we kind of taking it and and just twisting it around so that it, it we're has really embellishing on the storyline? We're really they're really kind of going full on and like drilling down. 
Just There's, there was Lydia was definitely suspect when she you know started coming around our group and everything. But yes. as far as like the the whisperers weren't weren't a threat for a long time. Right. Like we in the comic books, it was pretty much like oh here's these crazy people, oh here's their leader. Negan escapes, kills her, brings her head back. Like I, it's just yeah. all boom 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 and yeah. done and over with so fast. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, once Negan kills Alpha, you know, in the comic, you know, spoiler alert. But it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Negan's not going to be the one to take out Alpha anyway. Because especially because, you know, in the comic book, Negan and Alpha have like a pseudo sort of like air of romantic relationship, which which they're not going down that route, which I appreciate, you know, because that's, you know, again, I feel like when you go down like that trope, it's such an easy route to take, you know, like this is far more complex, you know, which I appreciate more, you know. But um, yeah, in the they comic- could though, and I, I think the way they would do because we get glimpses of that in this episode. What the way it could all go down is not Negan turning turning the faucet on necessarily, no. No. but Alpha like she sees something in him like a leadership kind of thing, right? In Negan, and, and then she kind of exploits whatever she can figure out. She could have tried. She could attempt to approach him the way she did Beta when Beta, they first right. met, but yeah. I don't. Not those tactics aren't going to work on Negan. I don't think. No, so. no, but I think there's. No, and I, I'm convinced that, yeah, I'm on the same page as you. Like, I don't think it's really going to work. But I think <laughs> they're going to make it, if they do this, assuming, they could make it so that you have this similar kind of interaction between Alpha and Negan, where, like, it looked to me like the Alpha in the comics was just kind of like this weird alien that just believed, that just did this one thing. But, like... She was like a vixen. Yeah. yeah but yeah. she almost kind of looked alien, like almost wooden, like a wooden alien. Like, she looked whatever but but she the was way, bald yeah. yeah yeah right that's i didn't like she looked bald but she still kind of looked svelte or whatever but okay. yeah she was she still had like sex appeal she was like this vixen that's how she kind of has this sort of like little repertoire or whatever with um negan and i mean there is i mean we don't know beyond that kind of little like kind of pseudo sort of interactions that she has with negan much more beyond that i mean we know that like in the comic like you know the sexual aspects of the whispers is very is much more stress than right. they do on the show right They're which kind is of completely, absent they've completely yeah. ditched that which i think is beneficial Let's because it allows away. them to focus on other things yeah it, it's you know it's it's to me i rather rather go the perspective that they're going i think that there's it makes the story a lot more richer you know and yeah. believable i kind of i kind of think the way they the, the way they sort of poked at that like the the heightened sexuality in the comic books i i saw very much in gamma's sister right because she was so young with the baby yeah like that's not something you would normally see. i mean right well okay i shouldn't say that there's a lot of very very young mothers but i got but- the impression she was very young she yeah. had a baby like without yeah. saying what happened i kind of i kind of got the impression you know this that it could be the choice. comic book way that it happened yeah. yes yeah, yeah. And this i is mean it's hard to really to that i will i will say that i know about it but ha- you know had i not known about it i wouldn't based on all of this stuff that's been happening right, on no. the tv show no no yeah just, yeah, just from I, my perspective that conclusion if i didn't have that yeah, yeah. that knowledge I, I, it could be but like yeah I, there's n- like, that's the thing like i would love that more if i had some breadcrumb that that's what happens <laughs> but there I isn't think any. That's such i think that's such an unimportant part of the storyline right, though like right. it's, it's like but it would be kind of cool in a weird way Oh, yeah, I mean, if they w- yeah, if they could throw some breadcrumbs in there, but but again, it ha- it plays yes. no part in it moving plays. the story forward. So. Exactly, right? It's, so it doesn't it need to be kind of it. Yeah. Right. right? And it's it's just and it's just going to be a trigger for viewers, and they're just exactly. there's going to be a whole ball of wax. That there's just yeah, there's no way of working that out. No, <laughs> there was no good survives. way, no, no good no. way to include that. And it's, uh, it's Angel King's a pervert. <laughs> Right. Yeah, Bring a no. Scott Gimple back. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, I like, but I did like that the that the you know the mother whisper was was so young. Yeah, you know, they did kind of point out that. Which makes yeah, like that no. the the personalities idea so much better actually because you get to see the differences in appearance and mm-hmm. you know like this is the young part of me this is the pure like yeah. mm-hmm. when I had her when I was young and yeah. which I think that's that that is what happened I think right didn't didn't Samantha Morton no oh, Samantha Morton didn't uh, Alpha have her at a younger age maybe like close to the twenty mark. Uh- Oh, I don't know. She's uh, she's. I actually, couldn't even take a guess at her age right now. She's actually pretty young, yeah. Samantha Morton. I think. 
you know so, I mean, like Alpha, like I, I couldn't even guess as to Alpha's age. Right, right. That And that's, I think that's intentional. It, it's everything, Carol, that you said about comic book Alpha that, that kind of rings true. It's like Alpha in the TV show is n- somewhat like her, but not at all in, in terms of appearance. Almost mm-hmm. not at all, except for the bald head, but even that's except just an affect. Head, that's it. That's and, and that's just an affect. It's not yep. like one tiny affect that you mm-hmm. can do to anybody. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Her clothing might be similar too. I think she does yeah. have a similar similar clothing, but yeah, yeah but that's just window dressing. But just it, like yeah, exactly. physical but appearance, personality wise. Yeah, personality, yeah. F- physical appearance, even in some ways, like yeah. the the body shape demeanor, is not demeanor, trophy. stature, everything. Yeah, Samantha Morton is a, is like a beautiful woman, but like yeah, but yeah, Alpha in the comics is more like va 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 va. <laughs> well, even like Michonne in yeah. the comics, in some senses, yeah, it, yeah. I, I'll, some, I think areas, a lot of the yeah. women in the comics have like a, a sex. Even the guys too. Let's just be fair. Because the guys, everybody's gonna is drawn anatomically not oblong. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> except in the right places, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I see that Baldrick Grimes. <laughs> Or was it Aaron? It's his hook. No, yeah, what are you yeah. talking about? Exactly. It's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, which takes us to sneak peeks, I think, right? Yeah, I, I think guess so, we can, yeah. I think like, so. I'm sure yep. there are things I left on the table, but who gives a shit right now? <laughs> pretty much at the end of my sheet i wrote down the little the little chant they did at the end but that was it which your husband actually chimed in about he said um that you i know what he said (laughs) yeah that he compared it to um i'm saying it to carol because she doesn't see it to letter kenny this there's like this group called the skids (laughs) it took me a while to figure it out too but i did Uh i did do you watch it I do. I'm in the, I'm watching okay. the seventh season. Yeah. So, so you the got skids it. have right, this, the skids have this saying. These are like kind of like raver drug addled uh, like yeah. twenty year olds basically. I think right. They're um, like emo ska kids. Yeah. Emo uh, ska okay. like um, yeah. What, what would you file that under? Like who is a uh, emo ska kids? That I had yeah. a very clear picture. If you told me that. So like they have this like little saying at the end or like in the end of the day. It's like give me three re- reasons why you must rebel. I hate the yeah. world. I hate my parents. I hate myself. And so like. <laughs> <laughs> them chanting uh what, her name is gamma is that what they said yeah or something like that no yeah. no no no. the the little chant at the end we walk in darkness we are free oh yeah, i thought you were talking about the gamma thing okay yeah. no 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 when they when they hold I wrote it down too doing their little chant. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, my first thought was give me three reasons to rebel yeah <laughs> 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 you, you must rebel <laughs> it's too uh, weird to be sexual <laughs> Just yeah. too it kind of ruined it for me. It was supposed to be a serious moment, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> hold my hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I was creeped out. I was creeped out. The but now that we're talking about what, it, yeah, it was yeah. kind of weird. That's what creeps that, it out. That was That's weird. And it wasn't yeah. both hands, just the just one. The one. <laughs> I just need the one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But she uh, starts it, I think, doesn't she? I, I don't remember how. So, yeah, the, no, one of them it does start it out first. Yeah. <laughs> it's very yeah. bizarre. It's, it's weird. I couldn't take it seriously. We are free. <laughs> Not even the second time. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. I, I was creeped out, but yeah, but like we talked about this like two weeks ago. It was kind of like, but sometimes when you watch things that are creepy, and it is creepy, like there's the other part of your brain that goes, "Whoa, shit!" Yeah, <laughs> starts laughing. That's, what, yeah, that's you my mean, brain. Like a, what you mean, like a Negan moment when Father Gabriel sneaked up and he's like, "Whoa, you are creepy as shit." Creepy. <laughs> but that yes, was yeah. genuinely funny. <laughs> no, but yes. you as a viewer will watch something that's kind of creepy, and you'll be like. <laughs> Shit, that's scary. <laughs> like you'll laugh, yeah. but you're like really creeped out. Yeah, <laughs> like how I laugh hysterically when Gamma Kyo sacrifices her sister for some reason. Or like, like when you, I can't make sense of this, so I have to laugh. <laughs> Like, there's a limit for me, by the way, because that kill in the, in the beginning of this episode, yeah. I did make a note that it was, like, Noah level. Like, oh, like just oh, the, yeah. when it you go good. for the yeah. face, that's when it's just, oh, yeah. that's when oh, it's yeah. real. Oh. I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for Tilted Tripod's uh, uh, interpretation of this scene. <laughs> you know oh. it's coming. <laughs> I'm so excited. Right? You know it's coming. <laughs> Oh that my god, this is going to be the clip me doing this right now. <laughs> oh, there's no time for clips because we're going to Walker Stoker. Oh my god. Anyway. <laughs> All right. 
sneak anyway, peeks. so sneak peeks. Yes, <laughs> I, I spend a little bit more time trying to get all this done. So I, I actually rearrange them from the way they appear in what I perceive to be chronological order because it kind of goes all over the place. Mm-hmm. So. In my interpretation, Gamma <laughs> walks up, Gamma walks up to Alexandria, like Daryl Michonne are at the gates, and tells them to meet them at the border. And Daryl goes, "Wait for what?" Uh, Gamma <laughs> goes, "Her idiot." Uh, and then um, Michonne discussing discusses meeting Alpha. All she wants to do is talk. Um, as one of the remaining highwaymen, or maybe in the new highwayman, who happens to be a woman, so figure that oh. one out, mm. wants wants justice for the other highwaymen. Mm. Okay. Did you follow all that? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because yeah. uh, I didn't. Because uh, we lost Ozzy and Alan. Yep. And Gage stands up really quickly and goes, I want their heads on, on pikes because his two other friends <laughs> got it in the end. <laughs> okay, um, Gage. <laughs> Yeah, I was kind of it was kind of cool. Like that makes sense, and I'm yeah. I love. See, the, th- the most terrifying thing to me thing to me is like things like um, the mist or like uh, Lord of the Flies. Like I things that oh, no. really terrify me is hysteria. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That that's me. That's my mm-hmm. personal fear. Like mm-hmm. hysteria I- is scary to me. Mm-hmm. Like group mentality and 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 mm-hmm. oh, that, that terrifies the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, so Michonne warns uh, if Alpha decides to send that horde, it's all over for them. Mm-hmm. Like, so they're all like getting up and like getting angry. And yeah. like, she, Michonne's just like, I'm going to shut that shit down. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway. Mm-hmm. So, town hall meeting. So, this, this is the town hall meeting explained a little bit more in the AMC.com premiere. So, I, I wedged that in two different facts. So, uh, Michonne says, we need to act as one. Okay. But there are three objectives. Two of them are in home base, basically covering the north and the south of Alexandria, basically trying to break up the horde before mm-hmm. it gets to the walls. and Because mm-hmm. when you break them up and they get to the walls, okay, it's not as bad. You know, that's what they're there for. Um, but the one uh, is the one where they're... Um, so wait, the first one's Father Gabriel. He takes the north. Aaron takes the south. And while he, she's saying this, you see him switch the hand for the mace. And the sound effect for that, <laughs> for him doing that is so rad. It's like, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. Like like a suit of armor, but like awesome. mixed with a car, <laughs> like a mechanical car, like very steampunk. I'm sorry, did I? I'm sorry, did I hear you say Father Gabriel was taking watch someplace? <laughs> <laughs> Your watch is over, Gabriel. <laughs> I don't have the hate for Gabriel, but I can see in, uh, all of you enjoy, <laughs> like enjoy Alexandra being taken by the North. <laughs> I, I didn't say anything. I don't know what you're looking <laughs> You didn't have to. I saved you time. <laughs> <laughs> you and Meg. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm now like, recalling all the moments. Okay. Um, so, yes. And then the third objective is uh, Daryl, Carol, and Michonne meeting Alpha at the Pikes at the border. Uh, oh, okay. You know, talking, right? Yeah. Um, but before they go, and this is in the extended sneak peek, I mean, this is a lot of this is in the extended sneak peek, but uh, some of it's implied. Well, it's it's a good idea that they're keeping watch because my first thought was, yeah, they're going to go meet Alpha, and then she's going to send a herd while the big dogs are gone. Yeah, which is mm-hmm. what they're preparing for too. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they're like expecting her to not just talk. Right, right. They're and, drawing our strongest forces away. Well, not even like even with the few that are gone, that's not going to make a hill of beans. But like the the idea that she's just there to talk. Like, like, we have to prepare for the worst case scenario. Like, she's just going to do it anyway, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but it's the... Oh, so yeah. Like, just after that conversation, you see Carol, like, stay behind, and she's reaching under the bed for a box, or like, no, for a gun that's taped on the bottom of the bed. She opens it up. It's a revolver with three bullets left. And so, like, it, it, this is good because, like, you know that guns are in short supply. So this is like right. a hail mary kind of thing. Like, that's <laughs> it after that. Um, but another thing Three that you bullets, see, huh? yeah, yeah, right. I was thinking about like the king, Henry, and me, just in case, uh-huh. yeah. right? Are you thinking that too? Yeah. Yep. Okay, that was my immediate thought. I'm like thinking, <laughs> yeah. what else could it be? I don't know. Uh, me, Daryl, and that's it. <laughs> um, no. Um, but after that, that she pulls up a bottle of pills. Mm. And just shakes a couple out and just like, you know. So there's another, it seems like there's another element here that we may not have seen in whatever time jump it is. Maybe mm. it's like a pill addiction or something like that. Mm. Opioids. Mm. Mm. 
We don't different. we don't know what kind of pills though? We don't know what kind of pills. Okay. So it could be like aspirin. I literally <laughs> wrote. But like if it was, it wouldn't be a big deal, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. But I yeah. literally wrote, hmm. hmm. Yeah. Because you don't know what to think, but it is well, I mean, doesn't, uh, was it, uh, no, it was Hilltop that got the whole pallet full of aspirin. That's right. That's yes. right. <laughs> that was awesome. But they were at Alexandria. Right, right, right. So, so. Which, oh man, maybe they go back in time to see what happened at, at the Hilltop. Because we haven't seen, again, we're making note again that we haven't seen anything about Hilltop. Nope. Daryl, Michonne, and Carol, and I think three background actors. So Daryl, Michonne, Laura, I think, and Carol, plus three background actors are at the pikes alpha says what i tell you about crossing my border you have to be punished and then <laughs> alpha go, alpha goes better run and then so i noted this and because it reminds me of the trailer guns and knives come out so she has like one of them has an ak full show and you know oh. that she has her sawed off mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um okay next is aaron and daryl killing tons of the dead <laughs> apparently in this next episode or whatever it's gonna be um and the last thing that we see i mean obviously it's disjointed but you do see some interesting things in a different setting that we expect carol sees a whisper in a gym like in a gymnasium, like, you know, like basketball court, whatever. And, and he's just standing there. So this could be like a lot of what we see in the trailer, like her seeing like uh, Henry in that mirror or that mirror with like, mm -hmm. like that cut in his neck. So she's seeing a whisper standing, just standing there in the dark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's another scene with killing the dead on a basketball court. So there actually is, pe there are people killing the dead at a basketball court somewhere in the open. Mm. You know, same kind mm. of night setting, I think, could be, I don't know. But there's somewhere else, it seems like. I don't know where, but somewhere else, maybe somewhere new. Or mm -hmm. it could be maybe that Oceanside maybe took back their old settlement. Which, oh, that, it, at that school. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it looks mm -hmm. it looked kind of like a rec center. So maybe, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, that's it. That's that. Boom. Yeah. That's how we do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just swoosh. <laughs> Yeah. If you like what you heard, leave a comment and a like on YouTube and Facebook. Um, most of all, uh, I want you to, and I totally forgot about this, I want you to still remember that we do have a giveaway. <laughs> There's six days oh. left to it. Um, so yes, head to squawkingdead.com. And while you are rating, you while you, you are rating the podcast on Stitcher and Apple Podcasts, you will be not only helping us out, but you will be scoring five entries per like rating. And you can do this every single day. So you can score a ton of entries to get a shout out from your favorite cast member. Uh, there's 30 to choose from. So should you win, and we do have two winner slots, should you win, and you could win both, depending on how many entries <laughs> you write in, you will get the choice of your, you can get two from the from one, who cares? Um, and uh, right. I don't know how much sense that makes. They, there's no time limit. So yeah, you can choose that. And then uh, yeah, you will get the shout out from whatever cast members available on the list, uh, 30 people to choose from. So enter today. I mean, enter yesterday. Yesterday, uh, you yeah. have a couple of choices too. Follow us on all the social medias. Uh, share share out our podcast. Uh, I mean, there's just so many ways to enter. Uh, uh, the ratings are daily entries, so just keep doing that, and that helps us out and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, uh, just meet us at Walker Stalker, please, 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 won't you? You know why? And I, why? What are you? Why are you hesitating? With that, I will call this a day. We will struggle next week to 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 get an episode in for you because we will be coming like late back back yeah. uh back home next week too. I think all of us are right. You and I are both are going to be on a plane when next week's episode airs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm going to try to squeeze in the AMC premiere yeah. somewhere in there. I don't know when. Maybe Sunday. I don't know. Maybe on the plane. <laughs> Yeah, download because okay. you can download it in advance. It's another AMC premiere feature. Oh, uh, nice. oh if I do that, I yeah, if I do that, during download the, day, the whole episode before you go. Yeah. Like you can do it within the app. Yeah. Oh, so, I don't know if I want to be on a plane watching it though. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll be coming back at 11, so I'd rather watch it on the plane, go to sleep, get my notes the next day, and then we have a show. And I have off the, the next two days after that, too. So. Um, you don't, but that's another story. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see you soon, and um, we've got some exciting news for you next week, so we will talk about that. It's it, you. If you've seen our social media, you know what I'm talking about, mostly Instagram, but there's some exciting things coming down the pike ways that you can help us and ways that you can be a part of the show so with that i'm gonna leave you in suspense there and we'll see you next <laughs> week and maybe in a couple days Bye. take care Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>